Hey everyone, I'm Brandon from Nogulus and welcome back to the channel. Today I got a video for you on how to monitor a Linux machine using the Nogulus Cross-Platform Agent, or NCPA. NCPA can be used for both active and passive monitoring and it is also available on a wide variety of Linux distributions. To see a full list of which Linux distributions you can put NCPA onto, please check out the link in the description below. During this video, we'll be swapping between a Linux machine as well as a instance of Nagios XI. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so to begin, we first need to install NCPA onto our target machine. This is a fresh CentOS 8 box and I have accessed it via SSH. In this video, I'll be using an RPM package to download and install Nagios cross-platform agent. For RHEL, CentOS, or Oracle distributions, you also have the choice of using the Nagios repository to install NCPA. I want to point out that this next step depends on which distributions and versions you are using. Please review the installing NCPA document in the description below for your appropriate distributions. To begin the installation process, we are going to go ahead and enter in the RPM command with a couple arguments here using U, V, and H. And then we will simply paste in the link from assets.nagios.com to grab the latest version of the NCPA listener. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. And now that we have NCPA installed, we need to make a configuration change to the configuration file. So with our desired text editor, we're going to open the configuration file. I will be using nano and our configuration file can be found in user, local, NCPA, Etsy. And we are going to change the ncpa.cfg file. We'll hit enter. And in this file, we are going to scroll until we find the line that mentions community string. Right here. By default, the community string is my token. We recommend changing it to something that you desire and something perhaps a little bit more secure. So I'm going to change mine to custom with a zero token, like so. Once we have our desired string in, we're going to go ahead and save this document like so. Now that we've put in the string that we want, we need to go ahead and restart the NCPA listener. So we will use this command here. Again, these commands are going to vary based on which Linux distribution you are using. And so the, for this, we will use service space uh, NCPA underscore listener restart. We'll hit enter. This is gonna restart the NCPA listener. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and make some firewall changes. We're going to allow the firewall to always allow port 5693 to be allowed through. This is how Nagios XI is going to communicate with our Linux machine. So we will go ahead and do firewall tax CMD space zone equals public. And then we need to add in our port. And again, this is a TCP port. We'll hit enter and we need to do the exact same command but this time we need to finish it off with a permanent and again this will allow xi to be able to communicate with this linux machine and that's all the configuration we need to do here on the linux side let's go ahead and switch over to nagios xi to be able to finish this up so switching over to nagios xi we are going to go ahead and hover over configure and then click configuration wizards by either clicking this Linux Penguin or searching for NCPA, we can go ahead and find the NCPA configuration wizard. We're going to need the IP address of our machine, which I forgot to grab, so let's go ahead and grab that. Here we go. Copy that. Back to our XI instance. Paste it in here. Again, we're doing 5693 for our port. And then we need to make sure that we put in our token it needs to be the exact same that we start our community string in the configuration file for NCPA. So again, I did custom. And let me toggle this so I can see what we're typing here. The custom with a 0 and 7 0 token. And then finally, we need to select the operating system that we put NCPA onto. Again, we did a CentOS 8 Linux distribution, so we'll click CentOS. Once we verify that all of this is correct, we will go ahead and click Next. 
And as you can see, Nagios XI has reached out to that Linux machine and collected as much information as it could. So now we can set what our system metrics are gonna look like, what we wanna monitor, and then we can also set our warning and critical thresholds. So for this machine, for our CPU usage, we'll bump this to 60 and 80. Now these values can be whatever you want them to be. You can also decide which specific items you would like Xi to notify you on. So for the sake of this example, we're going to monitor CPU usage. We will also monitor user count. We're not going to monitor swap usage. We will keep our main memory usage as is. And for disk metrics, we're not gonna monitor any of it. We'll monitor the network interface and that is it. But again, you can customize this page to whatever you would like it to be. Once we're satisfied with all of these metrics and what XI is going to be looking for, we can go ahead and click next. And this is where we're gonna set our check intervals. So by default right now, every five minutes, XI is going to reach out to that target Linux machine, collect all the data that it can, and then put it into the XI. Should the Linux machine be offline, XI will retry the machine every minute up to five times before sending out a notification to you that it is actually down. For critical systems, you can knock this top five down to a two. Uh, that's what we recommend. And your check interval down to either one or two to be notified immediately. For the sake of this example, we're going to keep this at five and we will leave this at one and three. So right now we have it set so that Nagios XI will reach out to the target Linux machine every five minutes. And if it's down, it'll retry it every minute up to three times. We can click next. And we want to send out this notification immediately. If there's someone specific that you want to be notified that this machine is having problems, has reached critical or warning thresholds, or is simply offline, you would select them here. This is a brand new instance of Nagios XI, so there are no users in here. If there were, they'd be populated in this menu here. Once we're satisfied with these settings, we can click Finish. And our configuration wizard is done. We will click Home, and we will go into Hosts. And as you can see here, we have the IP address of our Linux machine. It is responding, it is online, and if we switch on over to Services here, we can see that Nagios XI has reached out and is currently in the process of collecting data on this Linux machine. And that wraps up today's video, folks. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any more questions, please visit support.nagios.com for some more great documentation. Also, be sure to stop by our YouTube channel for some more amazing content. Also, don't forget to check out the description below for those two documents I talked about during this video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.